Hi there, this is Valentine and in this video I wanted to explain you a couple of things about variables. Now I have seen a lot of people that are very confused about the number of type of variables that they are. So you have like global variables, you have environment variables, you have collection variables, you have local variables, you have data variables, you have session variables. <sighs> have I forgot anything? There are a lot of variables in Postman and it's not always clear what you should use, when you should use it. And this is what I'm trying to do in this video to explain you a bit what is out there and when it makes sense to use a certain variable type. So let's get started. So what we're looking now is the different variable scopes that are available. And these are all different variable types. And you'll see that we have global collection, environment, local and data. So in order to understand the variable scopes, let me show you an example. In this case, I have set a variable with a key name and with a value mic in the global space. And in an environment, I have set the same variable, but with a value Jane. Now the question is in the request builder, what will happen if you try to access name as a variable, as a variable key, which value will get picked up? Will you have Mike or will you have Jane when you're submitting this request? And this is exactly what variable scopes are referring to. In this case, environment is more scoped than global. So in this case, what will happen is that Postman will look through all the scopes after this key name in our case, and we'll see, okay, I have it in the global space, but wait a minute, I have it in an environment scope as well, which means environment is in this case more powerful than global. So when this request will be sent out, the value that will be picked up is actually Jane and not Mike. And this can be easily inspected. If you hover over this value in the postman, you will see that the value that will be picked up is Jane and it's scoped in the environment. And this is what it means, the scope in which scope is this variable defined? We see that there are different kinds of scopes here, global, collection, environment, local data. And you're probably wondering what to do with all this, which variable type should I use for my use case? So what we'll do is we'll go over all these types to understand why they exist and how you can use it or when does it make sense to use it. And we'll start with global variables. You probably by now have heard about global variables, have used them a lot in the past. And they are sort of a general purpose variable. They can be used for everything. Ideally, they are like for quick results and prototyping. If you want to get something running and you don't want to worry about which variable should I use right now, just go for the global variables initially and you will figure it later if it makes sense to use something else or depending on your own experiences so far. That being said, as a best practice, once you have understood how your API is supposed to work, you should avoid using global variable as much as possible. Because what you will do if you use global variables a lot and you use different APIs, different collections, you will get like a very crowded global space and you will no longer know exactly well, is this API key for this API or for the other API or how about this token or how about any other value that I've used inside there? So it makes sense to avoid them as much as possible. Now, if you use them, if you want to rely on global variables, make sure that you clear that you remove any variables as soon as you do not need them anymore. And you will later appreciate that you will have a very clear global space, so you will not have any values that you do not need anymore there. And finally, when working with global variables in your scripts, try to use the scoped getter and the scoped getter is pm.variables.get. So what exactly that means is the following. Usually in the request builder, uh, you just use double curly brackets and access the variable in this case URL and then Postman will figure out which is the proper scope for this variable. In this case, it's just environment, but regardless of the scope, if it's defined in a global space, it will get that global scope. And in scripts, if you need to access a global variable, you will use pm.globals.get and then the variable name. 
what I would advise you to do is to use the scope variable getter. And this is pm.variables.get. And this is the same thing as the curly brackets, but when you are using scripts, when you are accessing variable in scripts. And what this will do regardless of what kind of variable you're trying to access is it will look at all the scopes that are available and try to get the proper scope for this case. Now, you can still use pm.globals.get, but if you're using this, you will be able later to use another variable type. So let's say you want to switch from global to collection variables, and you will not have to change your scripts from pm.globals.get to something else. So you'll be able to use pm.variables.get for any kind of variables that you want to use in the scripts, and they will be scoped to that specific scope. Moving on to environment variables. Environment variables are tied to the selected environment and they present a good alternative to global variables if they have a much narrower scope. Now, they are ideal if your collection needs to run against different servers, like for example, localhost, then you have a testing server or pre-production or production, and you can easily switch the environments and you will have the right address and so on. But they can be a good alternative even if you use one server, so one address, one API, as it keeps the variables away from the global namespace, which can get crowded. So you should use them when storing environment specific information and you can use it like for URLs, for authentication credentials, like username, password, any kind of variables, any kind of information that is specific to an environment. But you can also use them like for passing data between the requests. Now here's a simple example. I have defined three different environments, localhost, production, and testing. And if in one case I need to test my API against the local host, against the local development, I can simply select the local environment and then Postman will pick up the right value. And in this way, you can use environment variables for different type of environments. I would advise that you remove any variables that you do not need as soon as you do not need them. I would also advise against mixing environment variables with global variables. If you're trying to get away from the global space, try to stick to environment variables, not to use one variable as a global variable, the other one as an environment variable, because then, especially if you're sharing your collection, it would be a bit harder. Even if your scripts will look a bit weird. So try to get to use only environment variables if you think environment variables are something that you will use. And generally speaking, environment variables is something that you will should use a lot as it stands right now. And the same recommendation as with global variables, get the variables in your scripts using the scoped getter that is pm.variables.get. Collection variables is something that has been rather recently introduced in Postman but it's not really working the way I would have expected to work. Now, they are tied to a collection, but unfortunately you cannot really update the values. You cannot update or create collection variables values from scripts. And this sort of all limits what you can do with them. Ideally, it will be the perfect replacement for environment valuables if you only have like one environment. But as you cannot interact with them from scripts, it's really not so useful. Now, they can be ideal for storing some constants that do not change during the execution and you can manually update those values. But apart from that, hmm, I would rather stay away from them. When to use them? Anytime you have values or constant that do not change, uh, one example would be like for URLs, authentication credentials, Anytime you see inside your request some information that is repeating over and over again, it's a good idea to put it in a variable. Now, in this case, if it's not an environment, it will be a collection variable. So use that for storing any information that you do not need to change during the request. And it will be quite practical because when you export your collection, all this information will stay with the collection. So you do not need to export like the collection and then the environment and everything. So if nothing changes, you're fine and give collection variables a try.
Now, as I previously said, the usage is rather limited as they cannot be created or updated from scripts. And generally, if you're using, for example, environment variables anyway, I would rather say avoid using collection variables because it will make it a bit harder to edit because you will edit a part of the variables in your environment and the rest of the variables will be added in the collection. So it makes everything a bit weird. So try to avoid it unless you can only use collection variables. And finally, if you need to get variables in your scripts, you will be using the scoped getter. In this case, there isn't even a scripting API that will allow you to get a collection variable specifically. So you'll have to go with the scoped getter pm.variables.get. Last but not least, data variables. Well, you will encounter them when you are working with multiple data sets and there's actually not so much to say about it. So if you if you need to execute the same request with against different data sets, then you will have to use data variables. This is not an alternative. This is the only way you can do it. And data variables will only exist during the execution of the iteration. And the iteration will be only created from the collection runner or from Newman. And the only way you can set data variables is by defining them in a CSV or a JSON file. Now, this is all about variables, variable scopes, and the different type of variables that you can use in Postman. Hopefully, it will be now much, much easier for you to use the right kind of variable in your collections. Okay guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button somewhere, uh, check out the section uh, with the description, you will find some useful resources out there, you shouldn't miss them out. And generally, if you have any other questions about Postman, feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer all your comments. Guys, you are amazing, thank you for watching, see you next time, bye bye.